Let's continue with our series about the history of Zeppelins. During the First World War, civil airships were handed over to the military and new optimized Zeppelins were built especially for military use. At this time, Zeppelins had a similar speed as planes but could reach higher altitudes, carry around 10 tons and had a range of around 4000 kilometers. So the military used Zeppelins mainly for bomb attacks and reconnaissance. And planes were not a threat to them at the beginning. But planes developed further pretty quickly and could reach higher altitudes. So a race for higher altitudes began between planes and Zeppelins. The airships now needed some protection from the planes. And so they installed machine guns in the engine compartments so they could shoot to the sides. Later on, they even positioned a machine gun on top of the Zeppelins. Just imagine what it must have been like to sit on top of the Zeppelin with your machine gun waiting for planes. And in 1915 the famous Captain Lehmann, who later died in the Hindenburg crash, and Max von Gemmingen, nephew of Ferdinand von Zeppelin, developed a spy basket. That was first a butter churn fixed to the bomb chamber of the Zeppelin with a 300 meter long steel rope. Captain Lehmann sat inside and they lowered the basket during the flight. The idea was that now the Zeppelin could stay above the clouds and be invisible for people on the ground. But the small spy basket could fly underneath the clouds and direct the Zeppelin to its bomb targets. Because of its size, the spy basket would be invisible for people on the ground as well. The first test worked pretty well and so they properly designed a spy basket. It now had a fully enclosed aerodynamic bodywork, a comfortable chair so someone could sit there for a long time or in other designs even lay inside. They used a 900 meter long steel rope with the telephone cable in the middle to be able to speak to the captain and give it directions. The steel cable was connected to a winch which was driven by one of the combustion engines of the Zeppelins. The spy basket worked pretty well and enemies were still guessing how Zeppelins could see through the clouds and they assumed some optical trick. But you needed the right weather conditions for it which was rarely the case. And they designed it so properly that the weight of the spy basket system was now at around 1500 kg. And so spy baskets were sometimes dropped to lose weight in certain situations and you can see one of them in the Imperial War Museum in London today. Some units ordered Zeppelins without spy basket because they wanted to save the weight to carry more bombs or reach higher altitudes. While Zeppelins could reach around 3000 meters before the war, air fights during later years of the war happened at 7000 to 8000 meters altitude. In the first years of the First World War, it was hard to fight Zeppelins, but especially above the heavy fights in France, it happened every now and then that gas bags of Zeppelins had so many holes that they lost huge amounts of hydrogen and they went down. Sometimes they could fly back quickly enough, sometimes they landed behind enemy lines. But from February 1916, Allied forces used incendiary ammunition so they could cause a fire on board the Zeppelin and of course their hydrogen bags were highly flammable. That was a very successful method to shoot Zeppelins down and because of the now high losses just a year later, in early 1917, Germany decided to not use Zeppelins for bombing missions anymore but kept them in service for reconnaissance. At the same time, the large bomber aircrafts reached a technical level in which they could replace Zeppelins. They could now take around the same bomb load, were 20% faster and all that at much lower costs. So at the end of the First World War, large airplanes replaced Zeppelins for attack missions. So now let's take a look at the different categories of Zeppelins in the First World War and how quickly they developed. And it's worth noting that they were all designed by Zeppelin's technical director Ludwig Dürr. Type M and N Zeppelins were converted pre-war civil airships which could travel at around 85 km per hour. They were 163 meter long and you can see their passenger cabin in the center and their multiple vertical rudders. The next Type O Zeppelins were the first real military airships which started service in March 1915. They got rid of the center passenger cabin and only had two compartments now. One at the front and one at the rear. Additionally, this type changed to a simpler rear rudder with a cross shape. This type was more reliable and harder to damage for the enemy. The overall length stayed at 163 meter and also the gas volume stayed at 25,000 cubic meters of hydrogen. 
Type O Zeppelins had an engine behind the cockpit with a push propeller and another two engines in the second compartment which drove outside sitting propellers. This type of Zeppelin had up to 10 machine guns and two of them were at the top of the hull. They could carry around 1000 kg of bombs. The next generation was Type P, which started service just two months later in May 1915. These Zeppelins were especially designed to bomb London. So they kept the length but increased the diameter of the hull to 18.7 meter to increase the hydrogen volume to now 31,900 cubic meters. With this larger gas volume, they could carry more fuel, they installed a fourth engine, so in the rear compartment were now three engines in total. The additional fourth one powered a push propeller at the rear of the cabin. Also, they could now reach altitudes of 3,500 meters. They could carry up to 1,200 kg of bombs, and because of the additional engine, they were 10 km per hour faster. Also, some of these Zeppelins had a camouflage paint job, which gave them the name Bunte Kuh, so colorful cow. By the end of 1915, the Type Q Zeppelins were introduced, which was a 15 meter longer version of the Type P. So they were now 178 meter long and had 35,800 cubic meter gas volume. This allowed an altitude of up to 4,000 meters and they could carry even more bombs. But half a year later, a completely new generation of Zeppelins arrived. The Type R Super Zeppelins. While existing airships have been constant improvement of pre-war civil Zeppelin designs, the Type R Zeppelin was a complete new design. The hull was not cylindrical anymore and instead a large teardrop shape, which reduced drag and increased gas volume at the same time. They now carried 55,200 cubic meters of hydrogen, so more than 50% more than before. They were 196 meter long and had a diameter of now 23.9 meter. And this actually caused a problem because the German hangars were not large enough for them. So they produced type Q and R parallel to each other for a while until larger hangars were finished. They kept the proven engine arrangement but added another two compartments with one engine each. So type R Zeppelins had now six engines, could travel at over 100 km per hour and could carry up to 3500 kg of bombs. But this new generation came at a time when the defense was getting a lot stronger and times were getting harder for Zeppelins. Only six of the produced 17 ships survived the war, with L-33 being captured and analyzed in England. To reduce the losses, Zeppelins had to fly even higher, and so the Type S airships were introduced, which was a lightweight version of the Type R. They also optimized aerodynamics by removing the outside propellers, which were driven by two engines in the rear compartment. Instead, they used two engines to drive a large push propeller at the back. Together with the one engine behind the cockpit and the two engines at the sides, Type S Zeppelins had five engines. The following types T and U had smaller updates and were testing to reach higher altitudes. The new generation V, which hit service in August 1917, was designed for altitudes of more than 5000 meters. Such a high Zeppelin could not be heard on the ground anymore, and the fighter aircrafts could not reach it. To protect itself, the Zeppelin even reached 7,600 meter altitude in service. The W type was a 30 meter longer Zeppelin for longer journeys to bring supply to German troops in Africa, today's Tanzania. It had a hydrogen volume of 68,500 cubic meters, which was enough to carry fuel for a range of up to 16,000 kilometers. And in summer 1918, just before the war ended, the new Type X Zeppelins were introduced. These were the most modern airships of the war with a service ceiling of 6,200 meters, lightweight design, 62,200 cubic meters of hydrogen and six Maybach engines. It had a range of well over 7,000 kilometers and a top speed of around 120 kilometers per hour. The chief commander of German Navy Zeppelins, Peter Strasser, was still convinced that Zeppelins were better for bomb attacks than planes. His Type X Zeppelin was shut down over London in August 1918 and no one survived. And that was pretty much the end of Zeppelin bomb attacks in the First World War. When the war ended, there was still one Zeppelin under construction in Friedrichshafen. B-17 
BLZ114. Ernst Lehmann, later captain of the Hindenburg, tried in spring 1919, so right after the war ended, to demonstrate the capabilities of Zeppelins with a transatlantic flight from Europe to North America and back, without a stop and without refueling. That was important at the time because it looked like Germany wouldn't be allowed to build any kind of motorized air vehicles for the foreseeable future, which became reality shortly after. But not just that, Germany also had to destroy their large hangars to not build large airships anymore. So right before that, Germans tried to show the value of airships to still be allowed to build Zeppelins. Their Type X Zeppelin LZ114 was designed as a military airship and as such was fast, could reach high altitudes and could take lots of extra fuel instead of bombs. So it could easily fly to America and back non-stop. The Zeppelin factory and the German Navy already agreed to the trip, but suddenly the German government didn't allow them to start. The people involved were devastated and couldn't understand the political decision. LZ114 stayed on the ground and a few months later in summer 1919 the first aircraft crossed the Atlantic non-stop but only one way and in the easier west-east direction. And a few days later the British airship R34 crossed the Atlantic as the first airship, which was a copy of the earlier Zeppelin L33 which stranded in England three years earlier. So the development of the Zeppelins during the First World War was impressive. At the end of the war they were 50% faster, more reliable, could carry up to 10 times more load than at the beginning of the war, could reach 4 times higher altitudes and could travel up to 16,000 kilometers without a stop. In the next part we will discover how German Zeppelins survived the end of the First World War and how they developed new civil Zeppelins which offered the best travel comfort in the world on a level which is unmatched until today. See you at the next one.